Hey everyone, the hard part 5 here. Today I want to talk about Sorrow and Bliss by Mac Mason. The book tells the story of Martha Frill, a 40-year-old food reviewer that writes for a funny food column. She's supposedly married to a nice guy and she'll become a happy couple. But everything seems to broke apart after her birthday. Mac Mason's writing style is a bit unique. Uh, the writing is through bits and glimpses to her life, like a diary entry that might take a bit of getting used to if you've never encountered it before, but it is so useful in this storytelling since it can be used to deliver a lot of well-written jokes, a really good callback, a throwaway line remembering something, a dialogue that pack punch. The story will go through various parts of her life, from a child to a teenager, the first time her sickness came out, and then uh, up until her adult life. The book managed to tackle mental illness and depression in writing that is still jolly and witty without making light of the situation or losing nuance that is needed in the topic. While of course it's not as informative nor as educational as non-fiction can be, or worse, an experience in it, the author at least have the decency to know the difference between mental health and mental illness. Unfortunately, normally people can only sympathize with physical illness since they have that Oh, this could be me. Effect to people that uh, see its visibility. So mental illness is harder still for a lot of people to sympathize. But I think this book is a good start for it. I think the book says it better in these two lines. Normal people say, I can't imagine feeling so bad I genuinely want to die. I do not try and explain that it isn't that you want to die. It is that you know you are not supposed to be alive. Feeling a tiredness that powders your bones, a tiredness with so much fear. The unnatural fact of living is something you must eventually fix. And also, I said it's not something you can really explain to someone who hasn't experienced it. She cried, a single aching sob, and trying to smile at me said, I suppose it's the ultimate had to be there. The book show how there are still room for growth even for people with mental illness. Obviously obvious for people who have some familiarity with the topic that it is not true toughen up against a debilitating illness. Nonetheless, the book can be a tool to see the possibility beyond what uneducated online opinion can give. The book have a lot of thematic layers in it, but mostly it gave a spotlight to the person who needed help and the people that wanted to help them actually help, not just giving their opinion. It's a really well written story with complex flawed characters, as one of the characters aptly said. I said Patrick, I'm the worst person in the world. No you're not. His hand came down in a fist and he hit the arm of the sofa. You're not the best person in the world either, which is what you really think. You're the same as everybody else. But that's harder for you, isn't it? You'd rather be one or the other. The idea you might be ordinary is unbearable. The story of Martha Phil is a story of a character with a lot of flaws in her and a darkness that avoided her most of her life. How she had to live her life so and eventually find a way forward and the capability to accept more responsibility. This book, as I said, could be a start. That's about it.